How do you go from bad to worse? How do you go from consecutive trauma with no pause, no break, to insurmountable trauma? It said that the people were weeping. These are warriors. They done came, traveled. And David, could you imagine what he felt? He already is in a state where his leadership isn't being questioned, but if it keeps trending, it will be questioned and he will be hurt by these people. It said that the people were thinking of stoning them. Everybody is distressed. Distress is an understatement. Everything is lost. There is nothing. The cattle, the women, the children, everything burned. And the cattle and the women and children taken. Yeah. And it says verse 6 And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Yo. <laughs> it's interesting. Y'all made me cry. It made me cry. I can't even front. It made me cry. Because. Oh, you know. You ever get to a place where. You got to encourage yourself. Have you? Have you ever gotten to a place where you had to pull from, you had to pull from deep within? You had to pull from deep within that which you, I don't even want to say you didn't know it was there, but that which you, you don't pull from usually. You know, that reserve tank that you don't normally get to because it never gets that low. That's where David is, y'all. He's having to pull from that reserve tank. And this is what I say when I, this is what I mean when I say, you know, like you know, like you know, like you know. Everything is against him at this point. It's that, it's that, that noise that goes, everything goes silent. It, it's like you're just, you're watching it. But you hear nothing. You see everything, but you hear nothing. And it's that stillness. It's, I don't know how to explain it. It's that stillness that reinforces the fact that you know. It said that he encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He remembered. I know this. I, I don't care what this looks like. I don't, I don't know what's going on here and I don't care, but I've tapped into my reserve and it's taking me into overdrive. You gonna have to show me. I done came out of hell and high water and uh, I've already felt the worst. 
I've already felt the worst. So go on and do what you got to do. But I'm coming to get what is mine. All right. And so uh, he said, I'm coming to get what's mine. It's that numb feeling. It's a numbing. It, it's, it's numb. First thing David say is, Where is Abiathar? Tell Abiathar to bring me to Ephod. This was on my spirit last week. I had been thinking about this. And then Bishop did the thing on this. And uh, yeah, he said, tell Abiathar to bring me the Ephod. I'd like to get, no, I need to hear, I need to hear some tangible answers. And he asked God some questions about if he goes forward. And my monk, he says, and David inquired after the Lord saying, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. That's all he needed to hear. When I, I'm telling you, when you get your word from God, friend, it come like a new, it come like uh, adrenaline. You, uh, immediately your thoughts start opening up. You're like, okay, okay, okay. And so David went, he and 600 men that were with him and came to the brook Bessor where those that were left stayed behind. He took 400 with them, left two. And they found an Egyptian, okay? The Egyptian, this, is, this goes to show what I'm telling you. So they found an Egyptian that was left by the, Amal uh, 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 the Amalekites. Amalekites. Am Amalekites. These are the people that took the women and children. And uh, they left this Egyptian because he got sick. They had no loyalty to this Egyptian after he had done so much for them. And they found him and they fed him and they helped him. And they said, look, can you give us this information as to where they are? He was like, yes, as long as you don't kill me. He didn't have no loyalty to them. I'm telling you, loyalty will take you places money can't buy. Because for a lot of times in life, it ain't about money. It's about relationships. It's about, it's about character. It's about heart. And some of you, a lot of, a lot of people don't have it. And the only time you find out who has it is in these kind of situations, friend. These situations show you exactly what's cracking. It, it shows you exactly who's who and what is what. And a lot of times, many of you, souls of the world, you'll find yourself in these situations and you'll be poorer than the poorest person because you won't have nobody that is loyal to you. Everybody around you was just there to benefit from you. They never told you the truth because you never honored truth. You honored ego. So you got a bunch of people around you that pray, that, that praise your ego. Just like Ahab had when he came up against Micaiah, the prophet. And all of his, all of his prophets uh, uh, told him lies. And this one prophet was courageous enough to tell him the truth. Yet he, he, was, he just wanted to be paraded around by his prophets that put on the horns of the bull and said, you're going to go and you're going to knock him down and this and that. Not knowing that his prophets were going to lead, lead, lead him to hell. Who are you with? I'm telling you, I don't want nobody around me that's not, that can't tell me the truth. Nor do I want to be around nobody that I can't trust. Period. I'd rather be by myself. If I can't trust you, I can't do anything with you. I don't care how much money you have or how you look. I don't need you. I made it this far pretty good. I don't need you. This is, this is what's going on with this Egyptian. They left him. For only God to use him as a blessing to David. He could care less what happened to them. <sighs> Let 
Nonetheless, David comes upon them after he got the word from God, friend. David was sure of himself. And everything lined up. But had David not gotten that ephod, would it have lined up? Had David not consulted God? And this was how David moved. David didn't do nothing without consulting God first. David didn't let his emotions overpower him and misdirect him. David stayed in alignment. David stayed true to his alignment. He didn't let nothing overshadow it. Surely when the Amalekites came upon his family, all of the family of, his, of the nation that he was with and took everything that mattered, Friend, the women and the children are all that matters. What, what, what is there outside of that? They took everything. And David said, David could have easily said, oh, heck no. He could have easily got on a horse and just let's go. This is a warrior. These are warriors. These are warriors. So it would have been easy to do that. That would, I'm sure he wanted to do that. I'm sure his spirit encouraged him to do that. But he controlled himself. And it said he, yo. It said, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He didn't get, he didn't let it blow him. And the first thing he did, what did he do? He called, he went and he got a word from God. Which way do I go? What are we up to? Is this it for me? Is this, you, you calling me home? Prepare a table for me if you calling me home. But if not, what what is the move? What is the move? And when Abiathar, who was smart, this is why I say, who are you with? Had Abiathar not took the ephod, what would he have had? It was Abiathar that thought enough to bring the ephod. David didn't tell Abiathar to bring that. Yo, nonetheless, and it says here, verse 16, and when they had brought him down, behold, they were spread up abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah, both David and their stuff. And David smote them from twilight even until evening of the next day. He didn't quit. And they, their escape, not a man of them, save 400 young men, which rode upon camels and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that had taken to them. David recovered all. And these are the same people that they would have overtook had the Philistines allowed them to fight with them. And this is why the 400, 600 that were with him were thinking to stone him. Because they say, well, what the, what is going on? Nonetheless, y'all, this is a, this is a testament of what going in and out, in and out, back to back of things will do to you. This is the king. I will not call him nothing but the king. He is a king. He did miraculous things for the children and for building a name for the house, an honorable name. Not a name off of might, not a name off of will, but a name off of standing in alignment to God, letting God lead you. Making it, see, because many people think that letting God lead you is a, is a, a soft thing. It is the most courageous thing you could ever do. It is the most selfless thing you could ever do. It takes courage, friend, to do it. You don't know it because you don't do it. 
Because many of you will find yourselves in situations like this. You come back and everything is taken. And you're like, oh, oh no. Oh, is that what we're doing? Okay. And you'll take it upon yourself to inflict your will on somebody else. This is the this is the warrior. This is the king. You don't think he wanted to do that? Yet he encouraged himself in the Lord God. And he went and he got a word from God. That in itself, just that little small part. That takes a ton of courage, friend. That tells you really where your power comes from. That's real power. <sighs> this is my podcast conversation for you. Today, it was more of a Bible study, but uh, it's, it is what it is. I love y'all. Be good to yourselves and be good to each other. Peace and love.